What's going on everyone? In today's video, I'm gonna give you three keep a beginner tips if you're a bookseller on Amazon. Now, it doesn't matter if you do online book arbitrage, if you're cherry picking, if you're thrifting books, no matter what, I'm gonna give you three tips here on Keepa that are really gonna help you out. So with that said, let's get right in the video. Now, the first thing that you need to know is that Keepa is actually a Chrome extension, and so you would need to download that in order to basically do everything I'm gonna show you. Not only that, if you wanna see something called sales rank, which is this green line here, which is very important, and you also need a paid subscription, which is about like $20 a month. It's completely worth it. It's like the lifeline. It's like the blood or the water of your Amazon business. You absolutely need it. And um, yeah, with that said, let's go. Okay, so tip number one, whenever you're looking at a book that let's say doesn't sell too much, but when you're at a keeper graph, you see that it does sell. In other words, if we kind of just look at the sales rank of this book, you can see that, hey, there's multiple points in time when the sales rank drops. Well, that indicates that this book sells, right? And the first tip here is just because a book sells infrequently doesn't mean it's not worth selling, nor does it mean that you should be picking it up all the time. And here's what I mean by that. If you look at the use price of this book in particular, you can kind of see that it hovers between four or five or six dollars the whole year. And so even though you see sales ring drops here, and it does mean that this book is selling, this is a book that I still wouldn't be interested in, in buying, even if I got it for free, honestly, because it's a book that doesn't have much value. But the reason why I'm not interested in it is not that it sells infrequently. It's due to the fact that it doesn't hold much historical value. Its lowest use price is quite low all the time. It's 4 or $5 the whole year. That means, hey, people are willing to offer this book for quite cheap. It's a book that doesn't hold much value. Now, if we go to another book, let's say we take a look at this Star Trek book. One thing that you notice is that it also doesn't have very many, very many sales ring drops, meaning it doesn't sell very often. But well, what you'll notice is that when you use your cursor and hover over the lowest use price, this book is significantly higher than 4 or $5. It's a lot of times at 25 then it's at 50 then it's at 67 then it's at 57 It's even out of stock a little bit throughout the year. So the point here is that you have a, you know, two books that don't sell very often, but one of them tends to have a higher use price. That's a better sign that the book probably holds more value. But we can go one step further and we can look at a book like this which is called single family housing. And you can see that the lowest use price of this book is generally in the 70s, can even get up into the 90s. And again, another book that has, you know, is very similar in terms of how often it's selling, the number of sales ring drops, but here's a book that I'm much, much more interested in, uh, even that, despite the fact that it doesn't sell that much because of the fact that its lowest use price on Amazon is often very, very high. That's a good sign that the book actually holds some intrinsic value that People are actually want, wanting this book. Okay, the next big tip I have for you, again, beginner keep a tip, is that whenever you come across a book, actually take a look at the cover, right? And this is exactly like if you're thrifting or you're picking books out, library sales, or you're cherry picking, or even if you're doing online book arbitrage, like take a look at the cover and try to see if you can't figure out if there's what's called seasonality with it. Or on the keep graph, actually look at a longer period of historical time to see, is there any sort of pattern for when the use price of this book goes up or spikes and demand increases. So for example, if I look at this book, I can first kind of look at the title of the book or look at the image of the book and I go, okay, active and passive movement testing. All right. I don't actually think that this book would have seasonality, but just because it doesn't look like based upon the cover that it wouldn't have seasonality doesn't mean that it doesn't. And if we go to the Kiva graph and we look at a one year snapshot here, you'd actually see that the use price goes up very high in February and March. You can actually see the use price was in the 20s and then it goes up here into the 60s and 70s. And if we come down to the key chart and look at the last 4,900 days, there's a very repeatable pattern. And I'm just gonna get rid of a bunch of other stuff here to make this uh, very obvious to you that use price goes down low and then comes back high pretty much at the same time every single year. And so the reason why this is really important is because if you're somebody who was cherry picking this or thrifting this, and you know you come across it and decide to sell it, you might sell it too early. You might sell it way too low. And so this is, again, just another uh, important tip that if a book has seasonality, you should probably be waiting to sell the book at that time when it has the most demand, where you could also probably get the most money for it. So for example, even though this book is $6 right now, and by the way, I would buy this book, probably one, maybe two copies of this book, um, you can totally see how, how basically every year it would get up to 40 or 50 or 60 or plus. And so for me, you know, doing online book arbitrage, I'd buy it here at, you know, probably around $10 with shipping included. Try to sell for 40 or 50 or 60, like somewhere in that range. But again, 
if you're somebody who's cherry picking or thrifting, you wouldn't want to just send this in and, and price it at the lowest use price because you're ignoring that seasonality. Actually, you'd be one of the first copies to go and you would sell for way less than you probably should sell for. Now, my last beginner keep a tip here is actually not to look at this top graph. It's actually to look at this bottom graph here. And what you can see is I just have two things selected. I have the new offer count and the used offer count. The offer count simply just means the number of sellers on the listing. It tells us, okay, what's the competition look like? Are there 32 sellers on the listing? Are there 50 sellers on the listing? Are there just one or two sellers on the listing? And the tip here is to take a look at how high the offer count gets over time. How high is the offer count now relative to, let's say, a year ago? How high is the offer count in just the entire history of this book? And so a lot of the times what you can expect when you have a book that, let's say, has a very, very high offer count, it means it has a lot of people selling it. Generally, what that tends to mean is that the book's price is probably going to be lower just due to the fact of a basic you know, supply and demand. When there's a lot more supply, uh, then generally those people are going to compete with each other to try to get a lower, you know, they're going to compete with each other to try to get a sale thereby kind of lowering prices. And so here's a book that over the last year, it kind of looks like its used price is starting to go down a little bit. And one of the reasons for that is maybe it's because if you can see its offer count down here in the bottom graph, it's up in the 60s and 70s. And if we kind of look at its historical data over the last 2,800 days, you can kind of see that this last year, the offer count has been significantly higher than it's been in the past. Generally in 2018 and 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, the offer count was much lower, most of the time below 10. You can see a little bit in 2022, it crept up there to 30, but then again came back down. And so the point here is that when you see books that are at a very high offer count, it could mean a couple of things. One, it could just be a seasonal book that's not selling because it's not the right season, and you can expect that offer count to go back down. Or in the case of a lot of books, you know, when the offer count gets really high, it's just maybe there's just, uh, you know, not as many people buying the book as there used to be. And what you should expect is use, you know, the used prices of the book to come down. Now, let me show you another example. Here's a book called The Tree of Life. You can actually see that this book had multiple sales and drops at over $100 in the beginning part of this year. And then it's been undergoing a very, very kind of long period of time where its price is just going lower and lower and lower. And you can kind of see that's probably as a result of this offer count going up. More and more people are coming on the listing and just no one's really buying this book to kind of, you know, keep that sort of price degradation from continuing to go down. Until recently, you can actually see now the offer count is starting to go down a little bit. And what I would expect is for a book like this, it's used price to go back up. Again, looking at historical data for this book, especially over the last three or four years, you can see that this book has a lot of value. Like this past year wasn't really a fluke. It has sold in the past for $70, $80 and pretty consistently as well. But again, the key here is that Looking at offer counts is really important. Generally, when offer counts get much higher, you should expect the used prices on the listing to go lower. Just again, due to the fact that there's a lot more people trying to sell the book and a lot of people aren't really looking at people when they're pricing books. They're kind of just pricing books based upon live data rather than historical data. And again, what I mean is if I had this book right now, there's no way that I'd be pricing it at the lowest price. I would actually be probably pricing it between $60 and $80 because I know long-term historically, that's what it generally sells at. And yeah, it might take a little while for some of those offers to sell out. But I also know, again, I'm looking at past historical data that, hey, we've been at used offer counts much higher than this, and the book has, has come back. It has performed well. So I hope that little quick keep it tutorial, those three little beginner tips helped you there. If you want to learn more about how to read keepographs, if you want to learn more about you know how to price and sell your books, I've got a lot of videos on the YouTube channel. Make sure you check out those videos down below. But that's all I got for you guys today. I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.